cascading over the Pacific Ocean is obstructed one last time before entering the Great Plains by the mountains formed during the activity of the Lewis Thrust Fault. The mountains create a lower atmospheric pressure and temperature at high elevations, transforming the water in the air from a gas to a liquid state, growing clouds full of water droplets as the air ascends the mountains. Once the droplets become too heavy to float, the clouds release rain and snow on the mountain slopes. The tremendous amounts of snow make it a tough habitat for animals to survive. Tough habitat for animals to survive. Animals to survive. For snowmobilers to thrive. <laughs>
There are definitely a few defining moments that stick out through my riding progression that have shaped this path of being a backcountry snowmobiler. I grew up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and my, my dad had me on a kitty cat when I was three and a half years old, uh, ripping around a fire cabin. And from there I progressed from the 340s to the 440s and then up until my favorite sled, one of them favorite sled still, 98 700 XC with the Liberty 700 motor. One day after a big lake effect storm off of Lake Superior, our lake at our cabin was just a huge powder field. And for some reason I took out, we had a 92, I want to say, Indy 500 EFI, and it was a little narrower than that 98 700XC at the time. So I took it out on the lake, and every time I would try to turn left, I would go right. And every time I'd try to turn right, I'd end up going left. So I do that every time, you know, we get to be deep snow under our cabin, I take the, the old sled out because it's narrower and I go out and start making turns and all of a sudden I start to do donuts and this is pretty awesome. And then it led to uh, the next sled after that 98700XC was a 2003 Pro X. So now I have, you know, I got the bar risers on there and I got the hand guards and I'm decided I'm a backcountry snowboarder right now. This is like 2005, I want to say. I get this, this Pro X and, you know, I'm Riding, I'm riding the backcountry now, which means you know I'm finding meadows and I'm doing donuts. That's that's my backcountry riding at the time. I want to say it was 06, and Red Bull put a competition on called Fuel and Fury in Alaska, and all the uh, all the big snowmobiling names made their own little segments. And they submitted them, and they had them online. You could view them, and somehow I came across it. And I remember I downloaded all of them, so I could watch them over and over. And I mean, you had like Chris Brand just hucking. I think it was an M7, and uh, he's trying to get sponsored by Hot Pockets. And I'm just like this, this is awesome. This is what backcountry sledding is. Like I need to do this. Uh, so you know, I kind of made it a goal to get out west after high school. And that was what I was going to do. I was going to go backcountry sledder after high school. Uh, I didn't really make it after high school. And uh, I went to Michigan Tech after high school. 
that's where I really started to backcountry ride. Uh, I met a group of friends that were into that. You know, they've been out west, they've been to the mountains, so they they knew what was going on. And I went from doing donuts and flat fields, so all of a sudden we're riding through these these steep trees in the UP, and no, I'm like. 100% addicted. Um, by senior year in college, we're riding four or five times a week. <laughs> every every time we get out, we're gone um, because you know we had great riding. Ten minutes from opening the garage door to you ride your sled to the awesome riding. You ride for a few hours and come back and do your work. And... So after college, I moved to Montana and I was lucky enough to meet this rad group of friends. So this was my second season snowmobiling, living in the mountains. And honestly, there's nowhere I'd rather be. It's really cool to have guys that you rode with back in college plan trips and come out to ride with you. And they, you know, they get out there and it's their minds are blown and, and just to show them around where we ride every day is is really cool. And you wish all your you know all your buddies from back home could all move out you know west and live with you and ride with you every day, but it doesn't work out. Which that's all right. It's more snow for the rest of us, and uh, you know it gives them somewhere to visit. So it was a big year for uh, some of the guys on the team picking up turbos this year. And while I didn't pick up a turbo, I did pick up a, a digital camera. And somebody had to be there to, you know, monitor these guys and, and, and document the learning process. I know for Travis, it was uh, essentially like <laughs> he had never ridden a snowmobile before. He had to start all over again. So uh, somebody had to be there to, you know, get the pictures of that. And so I spent a lot of my season. You know, looking for uh, the best viewpoints, trying to get the best pictures uh, of these guys on their snowmobiles, and the uh, turbos are—they make picture taking easy. Uh, you basically just have to go out there and <laughs> stand around and take the pictures, and all that horsepower takes care of itself. guys with turbo sleds uh, they spend a lot of their time trying to get real close to you and, and put on their best moves right in front of the camera and the result is once in a while he gets sprayed with some snow and Tori especially was, was really good at that uh, I remember days where you know three four times in a row Tori would spray me and my camera with a bunch of snow or he'd ride up above me and fill my helmet of snow and the helmet would roll down the hill and I was I never got a back for it but this season I'll have to I'll have to fill this helmet with snow a few more times. Just send it bro. Biggest hurdle um, is getting out of my head. It's it's really hard to not hesitate on someone go, you know, especially when you have limited experience. It's uh, yeah, man. you have to have confidence to go anywhere on someone go. That country, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Wheelies, tail standers, loop to doos, hoo ha's, skilly doos, skilly doos, and uh, 
show some artichokes and skidoos how things are done. <laughs> um, and then as far as racing goes, um, you know, this, the, the semi-pro class is extremely competitive. Racing is a lot more difficult than, you know, it, it seems. Um, so, yeah, I just want to be competitive at the, in the semi-pro class. You know, top tens, I'm thrilled with. Being able to qualify is really cool. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. What motivates me? Um, the constant progression for riding. Um, you know, it's, it's not easy to, to ride a snowmobile by any means. It's like trying to ride a couch um, with a throttle. And I don't know, it, it's always challenging. There's never, there's never a day it's like, oh, I have a you know, It's, you know, you, you gotta look for the challenges, but they're always there. It's snowmobiling. It's, it's the same as anything else. To be successful at snowmobiling, you gotta surround yourself with good people. You know, and if you, you go ride with the best people around, then that's what you're gonna be. You're, it's just kind of sink or swim. Every ride you go on is different snow conditions, different weather, different temperatures, sometimes different crew that you ride with. And every day that you go out is probably one of the most memorable because every time you're out there, good buddies or a new group, you're making memories and it's a lot of fun. The racing versus backcountry riding. The skill set is similar because obviously you're on a snowmobile and no matter what you're fighting the snowmobile backcountry riding you're you know, out there with your buddies you're kind of competing against your buddies or trying to look for the best lines throughout the day but usually backcountry riding you're not on the same track or racing you're in the actual course or in the actual line you're trying to follow and you're trying to beat everybody up the mountain. So backcountry riding, you know, riding as hard as you can throughout the day. Yeah, it can pay off for racing because you are looking for different lines, kind of, you know, it's a different skill set. For racing, you're just pushing yourself for a minute to a minute and a half as hard as you can. Or in the backcountry, you're more along the lines of trying to somewhat pace yourself a little bit. It all, um, it all ties together. In 2008, I was the 1000 in group stock winner and then was able to come home with a improved stock team of the hill that year and, and then the following year I got the win and got the king of the hill again. Only about three foot of fresh, some good tight tree lines, boosted snowmobiles, good group of pals, that kind of day. Turbo opened a lot of doors with that, the hopovers, the re-entries, that kind of thing. <laughs>